you're going to want to work the door, oh, I don't know, five or six times. And then uh, you'll notice when you're uh, working it out that uh, you'll get brush marks in certain areas if you push in too hard. That's not a problem. All you do is you take the cleaner of your rags, come in here and give it just a wipe like that, and you're done. So, okay, now we're going to go ahead and let the, oops, i got to clean this up over here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and let the glaze set up, and then uh, I'll take you over and show you the, uh, the paint stuff that we did. And then you'll be ready to top coat everything. So we'll be right back with you, okay? Okay, as you can see from the pictures, we've already got our uh, first uh, color of glaze on here, which is our uh, Van Dyke Brown. Now, um, in looking at the job, uh, after we looked at our finished product, the colors are a little bit too cold. Uh, as I mentioned before, the, the whole uh, surroundings for these doors is very Tuscan. There's a lot of browns. Um, so we're a little bit too gray. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add a, a second or maybe even a third color of glaze uh, to bring out a little bit more brownish color in them. Now, when you're doing this, uh, it's different than coloring the whole uh, door with glaze. It's simply a matter of spotting uh, certain areas on and then blushing it away. So uh, we'll get set up to do a close-up on that and be right back with you. Okay. Okay, as you can see, uh, a lot better, uh, getting a lot better idea of the, the look that we're uh, kind of going for here. It's very, very, very old world, um, very dated. Uh, there's a lot of stonework in the house that is just absolutely uh, just gorgeous. So we're trying to complement that. Now, um, I'm sure you can see uh, we've got our white base paint now <clears throat> and our Van Dyke Brown glaze, but the color's a little bit too cool. Okay, we want to warm it up a little bit, so um, we've done a little bit of uh, tweaking to uh, some color, and uh, we're going to go ahead and add a little bit warmer tone to this, and um, I, I want you to see how just with a very, very, very teeny tiny amount of color, it'll really liven up the door a lot. So anyway, I've got, uh, got my brush with just a little bit of color on it right there. I've wiped it. <clears throat> gotten the brush almost completely dry, and then we're going to go ahead and add in our uh, second color there, and that should really make things pop out nice. And basically the color that we're uh, kind of gently blushing in here is a uh, kind of a, a, oh, I would call it a medium chocolate color. And as you can see, just by the, uh, the contact from the brush, um, it's really visible right here on the edge where the brush is biting in and uh, certain areas <clears throat> that were a little bit drier in here. So we're going to go ahead and just keep brushing this, uh, getting that little bit of chocolate in there just to uh, warm the door up a little bit. Now you don't want to paint it um, and or undo the stuff that we've done with the, uh, the Van Dyke Brown because that's the essential look that uh, that we're going for in this case. It's just adding a wee bit of color in there to liven it up. So if you can take a look at that, you can see our little bits of chocolate in here and then right on the edge. I don't know if you're going to be able to make this out too well, but, but it's there. We'll go ahead and get a zoom in <coughs> on that. See if I can get out of the light. Well, I don't. Oh, there. Yeah, you can see it on the camera right here. Are little bits of chocolate, right in here, mixed in with the Van Dyke brown. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and add that color to the rest of the doors, and then we'll be done. And I'll be right back with you.
that's about it for today. You have one more step that needs to be completed, and that is to clear coat uh, everything that you put your color and your glaze on. A um, couple of tips, you want to make sure that you're using compatible products, meaning if uh, you did a, a latex paint, your clear coat needs to be compatible uh, with latex. If you used a lacquer, obviously you're going to want to use a lacquer clear coat. Uh, same thing with a poly or any other type of material. And there's even some brands that just don't seem to, because of their chemical makeup, uh, don't really work together too well. So make sure that you, uh, uh, in an inconspicuous area, make sure that you do a test to make sure that everything is going to work out just fine. I also have to uh, mention something we just kind of blew right past here uh, in showing you how to do this was always, always, always uh, before you do anything like this, make some sample boards. You want to know what you're doing before you're trying to do it. Otherwise, uh, it could turn into uh, a very big frustration to you. So, anyway, uh, that'll about do it uh, for today, like I said. And uh, I, I know we went through all of this really, really quickly. And even on the video, it's going to seem uh, way more condensed than that. So what I've done is, uh, at the end of the video, I've left my email address. I, I share uh, my knowledge freely. Uh, so if you have any questions with regards to uh, faux paint or uh, toning and glazing, uh, cabinetry, millwork, or even uh, some general uh, remodel issues or questions or whatever, feel free to hit, hit me in my email address. So um, with that being said, for Envirostatics of Scottsdale and DePaul Remodeling, this is Dean. Thanks for watching and have a great day.